News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of Peltalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the internet with more than 4 million unique users and now on demand on iTunes. And News Talk Online is now also syndicated by CRN Digital Talk Radio, www.crntalk.com the cable networks serving an additional 12 million households. For those of you who are joining us from our affiliate base, if you want to join in the conversation, go to www.peltalk, that's P-A-L-T-A-L-K dot com, slash news talk, and click on the join the room button, and you will be transported into our virtual auditorium. Well, we have two guests today, actually. Uh, we will be uh, celebrating Halloween as we do here in the United States. Oh, do the rest of you guys celebrate Halloween? Uh, with Arthur Matos. He's the founder and lead investigator of the Eastern Paranormal Investigative Center. That's right, he is a real live Ghostbuster. But first, our guest for the first half of the show, and I'm so pleased to have him with us, is former FEMA director Michael Brown. Uh, Michael Brown believes that uh, some of the wildfires in California may have been started by environmental activists. At least two of the wildfires in California have been ruled arson. We know that in at least one case, a young child uh, has been identified as a person who started the fire. But others have speculated that terrorists or illegal immigrants may have torched the countryside. Helping to put all of that into perspective for us today is former FEMA Director Michael Brown. Uh, Mike Brown, welcome to News Talk Online on Peltalk.com. Hey, it's great to be here. I just want to say quickly that uh, in my previous press conferences, I've talked about how not how the environmentalists started them, but how some of these environmental policies have probably made the fires worse because we can't do the kind of controlled burning and forest thinning that we would normally do in these situations. So I just want to make sure your listeners understood that at the beginning. Okay, well obviously I didn't understand that and I appreciate you uh, correcting that for me. You know, uh, you I mean, took it on the chin. Although we've, you know, we've had, I mean, not, not to veer off on the, on, the, on the wrong subject here, but you know, we've had those problems in, in Colorado uh, where I forget where what it was. It was the um, environmental, uh, some, some group that burned down a lodge in Aspen somewhere. So we've had that here, but that's certainly not what I was claiming in these wildfires. The wildfires were really just made worse because we, for whatever reason, the government just will not go in and do the kind of forest thinning and, and uh, control burns that would keep these fires down to a little more controllable uh, um, uh, burn situation. Well, never leave it to uh, the media to misquote you, uh, Mike Brown, because I researched it and they claim that you said the other, <laughs> the former. Well, uh, well. And, and speaking of that, you kind of took it on the chin, uh, and you know, probably people will ask you questions about this, and we'll give you an opportunity to respond to to, to it if they sure. do. Over the handling of FEMA's response to Katrina, um, but. As I recall, and I was one who was down there at the time for CNN covering uh, uh, Katrina and, the, and, and all of that, I never recall a news conference <laughs> that you held as the head of FEMA where it was not reporters uh, in the news conference, but FEMA employees asking the questions as what happened here with the wildfires. What the heck is I don't, going I don't on know, but uh, I've talked <laughs> to uh, the former FEMA director, Joe Walbaugh. He and I have both laughed about that. I mean, gosh, if we'd known you could hold fake press conferences, well, just imagine what we could do. I mean, we could really turn this whole country into 19, George Orwell's 1984, and we could just ask the questions and give the answers we want, and the public could just go on like nothing was wrong or everything was fine. See, it's fascinating, isn't it? It's also kind of scary. I, I can't believe it. I mean, we already had... Previously, uh, we know that reporters were seated with questions to ask at White House press conferences, and then they would pick that individual to ask the question so that they could get their point of view across that they wanted brought out at the press conference. I mean, it's just unbelievable, and you wonder why uh, the public doesn't, uh, tr doesn't trust the process, the government or the news media, when that kind of thing happens. But let's talk about, at least initially, the California wildfires, uh, uh, Michael Brown. Um, so we know that some of them were, were set. 
We know that there were pictures taken of some of the fire stations in the rural areas of uh, California several months prior to these fires uh, beginning. And we know that Homeland Security sent out uh, advisories to law enforcement and to the firefighting services to be on the lookout for suspicious people taking pictures of fire stations. Uh, we've seen all kinds of speculation in the news media that this might have been the result of terrorists set, setting fires. Others say that maybe illegal immigrants did so, either deliberately or inadvertently. Do we have any sense, uh, Michael Brown, a, as to, uh, with the exception of the one fire that we know was uh, a child playing with matches, how these fires began? I don't think so. I mean, because, and, and here's what... Here's what bothers me about that whole scenario that you just described, Gary. I mean, it's the typical thing of, you know, we immediately jump to the conclusion that either terrorism or there's some evil intent involved in all these incidents. I mean, if you just recall, think back to when the steam pipe blow, uh, blew up on the Upper East Side in Manhattan. The first thing we do is we worry about whether or not it was terrorism. And it just bugs me that we've kind of created this atmosphere of fear this is that's the first conclusion we jump to until we prove otherwise. I mean, it's almost like saying, I mean, that's kind of turning inside out or inverting the whole, you know, you're not guilty and you're innocent until proven uh, guilty. We just, we need to get over this whole fear factor and recognize that there are risks in our society based on where we live, how we live. I mean, steam pipes are aging and old in New York City. And if you live in the mountains outside San, you know, San Bernardino in California, you're living in the wildland urban interface, and you're going to be sub subject to fires, just like I am here in Boulder, Colorado. So I wish we would just get more factual about risk and factual about what some of the hazards are instead of just immediately jumping to the conclusion that, well, let's first check and see if it's terrorism. I mean, it's just creating this boogeyman out there that I just think is wrong. Well, I, like you, uh, here's where we, you and I have common ground. Uh, we are both proponents of being prepared for any kind of eventuality. It doesn't really matter whether it's man-made or natural. What happened, exactly. of course, uh, with Katrina was, was a natural disaster. You, one might say it was exacerbated by um, a poor uh, uh, engineering with the levees. But clearly, and I had opportunity to go into Mississippi and saw how the people responded in Mississippi, and then I went to New Orleans and saw how the people responded there. And unfortunately for the people in New Orleans, they were sitting there huddled waiting for somebody to come to their help while the people in Mississippi, and I know this is a generality, but I'm saying by and large, took matters into their own hands and uh, did what they had to do